I gave you a few things to read and um, you've watched some videos, I know that. And so, you know, right out the box, trying SE is actually kind of difficult. Like when you're trying to think of the steps, you're trying to think of what questions you should go next and what avenues I sh you should take. And I think, you know, the beginning, I think it's a good idea just to keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and we'll just uh, not really get into analyzing the claim so much is just to how to start off the SE conversation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, my claim is, okay. and this is that we assume that we have, we have uh, chatted for a while, we have a good rapport, the person feels, com I feel comfortable talking to you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have a claim. And my, cl and my claim is that the earth is flat. Okay. Um, and uh, that's where we like to start. Awesome. Okay, so the Earth is flat, is your claim? Yeah. All right, that's, uh, so I guess, do you, when you say that the Earth is flat, does that mean that you feel like that all the Earth is positioned on one similar plane and that all the continents are on a flat surface? Oh yeah, I know it is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And how confident are you in this belief on a scale of one to seven? I'd say on a scale from one to seven, I am like eight. Okay, so really confident. Eight out of seven. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I guess how important is it to you to believe in things that are true on the same scale, on a scale of one to seven? Uh, very important. Seven. Okay, yeah. so you, this is a claim that you believe in strongly, and it's important to you believe in strong things. Yes. Or to believe in true things, I yeah. should say. Yeah. Okay. And so I guess the question is, how did you come to be an eight on this belief? How did you come to believe this? Right. Well, because um, I think I've read the Bible. And in Genesis, it talks about the earth as it's and is as it's flat that you know the earth was created and then the other stuff was created like the sun and the stars and you know and things like that that circle or or go around the earth so let me just restate so i make sure i understand correctly yeah so your belief largely is or almost entirely is based off of the interpretation of the bible is that correct yeah well not my interpretation that's just the bible uh yeah. that um, I mean, that's just what it is. It just says that that the earth is flat, and that's how God created it. It's not really in nowhere. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the earth is round or anything ridiculous like that. Gotcha. So, is there anything? I guess if there were to be someone that would inter read those same passages that you've read and come to a different conclusion about what they mean, how would you respond to people like that? Oh, very simple. Uh, they would be wrong because they're interpreting the Bible incorrectly. That, again, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the earth is um, round. It just doesn't appear. You can read it all day long, it just doesn't say it. So I think, uh, I think that's what I'd say. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so you're reading the Bible, you're not finding any evidence that it's saying that the earth is round. So it's pretty definitive then from your perspective that the earth is flat, is that correct? Yes, it's quite definitive. It's okay. pretty clear cut. All right, so let's say that there was like a, a, a third party, we'll call him Bob, who's non-religious, he's in Africa or wherever, he doesn't, he doesn't grow up with any specific religious paradigm. And he sees you and he sees someone else who's reading the same passages and coming to this a different conclusion. How would he come to the conclusion about which of you is finding the correct interpretation of those passages? Say it again. So let's say that there's a third party. Okay. And he doesn't have any skin in the game. He's just interested in finding out the truth. I see. Uh huh. And he has you who has this interpretation of the Bible and he has another person who has a different interpretation of the Bible, how would he know which interpretation is the correct one? The one that says it's flat. 
because I mean that's basically what the Bible says. Uh, that's the way he should go if he wants to know the truth. If he doesn't want to know the truth. He can believe what he, what he wants, I guess. Right. So if you feel like your your claim is a little bit more impactful, perhaps than the other. Claim. Well, it's truer, sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, let's say that there's someone that didn't believe in the Bible. Uh, I guess uh, as. I guess, how, how is it that you came to believe the Bible to be the true kind of source for truth? So um, you're asking, how do I know that I read it in the Bible, but how do I know the Bible is true? Mm -hmm. right. and I said, well, I would say um, that it's, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's easy. It's, it's my faith. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Faith. Excellent question. By faith, I mean that I really, really, really believe it. And I don't really, um, you know, you can show me this or that, but I really have this spiritual, higher power feeling about it, yeah. that it's true. Okay. So you're, you feel like your feelings then are, they transcend beyond the physical? Would you say that's a fair assumption? Absolutely. I mean, I feel it spiritually. Okay. Is there anything that you could experience that you feel like would diminish your confidence, that would lower it from a, an eight? to like a seven or a six, let's say for example, I don't know, what, let's say theoretically, you had the ability to go up into space and you were able to look down on the earth and this is all hypothetical here of course, yeah. and you saw that the earth was, was a sphere. Uh, would that change your belief in the claim at all? Uh, no, because, um, uh, you know, my eyes have deceived me before, mm -hmm. and I've, you know, see, I've seen things that I thought I've seen, but I've seen something else. Yeah. And it's not really why I believe the belief. So you're saying that you don't necessarily at all times kind of trust what you're seeing over what you're feeling? Is that a fair assumption? I trust the Bible. Okay. So let's say that, um, is there anything that you could experience that you could imagine that would overwrite kind of your confidence in the Bible as the ultimate source of truth? Well, it is. I think, I mean, it is the ultimate source of truth. God said so in the Bible. And um, so, I uh, don't see, I can't see myself going lower than an eight. I just can't see it happening. You, got it. <laughs> you can't imagine a scenario where your confidence would be lower? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, the Bible is the truth. So let's say theoretically that you were to be go up into space and with your eyes you saw that it was flat, that the earth was Mm -hmm. Flat. Would that change your confidence level at all? Kind of confirming your belief? Well, I'm already pretty strong on my belief, and I think it would show, it would confirm that I'm right. Yeah, it would confirm that I'm right. So it would, would it change your scale at all, though? Or? It might, I mean, I'm at an 8, but I guess it could make me an 8.5. That would make sense, because I did see. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I could see that happening. Yeah. yeah, so it could potentially kind of boost you up a little bit if you Absolutely. saw it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, this has been a really... Uh, interesting interview i really appreciate you yeah, sharing what thanks. you believe in and uh appreciate it yeah thank you for for visiting thanks paul great job i mean truly that's your first se hard to believe that's awesome you nailed so much of what se is truly so i think that is just freaking awesome really that was really good you had the right line of questioning and there were just certain times where I think you were um, felt the impasse. Like, where do I go from here? Yeah. Right. Have you met someone that's 
so many. Wow, that's oh, yeah. terrifying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, I do. To that extent? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Toxastically closed. Wow. They're just uh, not so willing that to That feels like a parody. Doesn't it? A little bit. But, um, but they, you know, they're so earnest about it that it's not. I mean, yeah, they no, really no. believe it. Really. Um, Urban about it and uh, yeah, so we try it the other way. Yeah. Okay. So uh, should I mirror kind of your level of? Yeah, we can do the same. Yeah. Claim the same. If you want to be as fervent about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so you have the claim. So I believe that the Earth is flat. Okay. On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that this belief is true? At least a seven, if not more. And a, on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Things that are true and real. I don't want to believe in things that aren't true. Eight. Okay, so very high on both scales. How do you know your belief is true? Um, well, I think most importantly is the Bible says that it's true. The Bible says that the earth is flat scripture okay so it comes directly from god i'm not sure what other source i could trust more than from god's mouth mm -hmm. so that's probably the most important factor for me jimmy let's say jimmy is sitting next to you and jimmy he reads the bible every day he's uh he's even become a, a pastor i mean he's you know he really knows the bible and in, in, inside and outside and whatever reason he reads the Bible and he's come to the conclusion that according to the Bible the earth is quite round I'm a third party I just want to know it's true if his belief is true I'll believe that if your belief is true I'll believe that how could I decide listening to you two talk what belief is more true and real you think I mean I think Logically, if you were just to listen to the, what I'm saying about the scripture, I've read it and I know what it says and it says that the earth is flat. So yeah. if you just listen to me talk, then you'll be able to see that my interpretation is the correct one. I don't know what, why I would even use the term interpretation because it's literally like true or false for me, right. you know? So, but yeah, that's how I would know. Um, well, let's say, what name did I use? Billy, I think. What did I say? Maybe was it Billy? Is it Billy? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> uh, let's say Billy. Yeah. Billy, um, I ask him, how do you know his belief is true? And he says, well, if you just, I know it, I've read the Bible, and if you listen to me and the logic is on my side, and if you uh, want to hear the truth, listen to what I say, and you'll believe what I believe. So pretty much he's telling me the same thing you're yeah. telling me. I think at that point, I would imagine I'm sort of at a loss, because you're telling me this, he's telling me this. At that point, is there a way I could figure out, you know, where I should go, like, where I could align myself with who I should, the belief I should align myself with, because I wouldn't want to believe in true things? I mean... There's gonna be a lot of people that are influenced by Satan that are gonna tell you things that are false. So if you wanna be deceived, you can listen to what he's saying. Yeah. But if you wanna like listen to true things that come from God, then you're gonna to wanna to listen to me, I guess I would say. Yeah. I guess the weird thing is that I'm just I would imagine Billy could say the exact same thing, right? Billy could say that I have the truth and if you don't want to believe it and if you want to be deceived by Satan or whatever go right ahead and I'm like I'm still at a loss because you're telling me one thing and he's telling me another thing and I'm just I, I just I can see like each step we go I'm still at the same place how can we get out of that how could I kind of know more you know uh, yeah I mean I guess you could I mean, you could ask, have, like, have you met someone like Billy before? Or, like, are you saying this because you know someone like Billy that told you that? Or is, like, 
Well, I've met, I don't know anyone that's like saying Billy that. Before. I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, I've read the scriptures and have found that they that believe that the Earth is. Uh, yeah, I think I have actually. I mean, I think I have met people who are who call themselves Christian and believe that the Earth is round. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I guess it's just like I have my faith that I have like read it and I feel that it's right from God, and that's just what I believe. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean by faith? When you say faith, what does that mean? I mean, faith is like something. It's like information that comes direct from God. Like, and I don't have necessary like evidence that I can like show you that proves it. But like, I still know that it's true. So faith is knowing things without without evidence for that thing being true. Yeah. Well, it, there's evidence, but I can't necessarily show it to you. Like, it's personal. Like, it's a personal thing. Yeah, how do we... I'm trying to think of how we have evidence that that, when that evidence can't be shown to someone. It's like, is that, maybe that's evidence. I'm just trying to think of how we would define that word then. Like, what is evidence? Um, it's an experience that I've had and like other people have had in my family and friends and other things. Like. Obviously, like, science hasn't evolved to the point where it can, like, track everything that happens in the world. So, like, I believe there's, like, spiritual communication that's happening, that's happening to me, that, like, I can't prove it to you, but it's real to me because I'm experiencing it. So, like, I just think that there's things out there that exist that I can't, like, show or prove to other people, but they're real because I'm experiencing it. Yeah. Now, I wonder if Billy could tell me something similar, that he just, he has faith in the sense that he has evidence for it, even though there might not be um, evidence that he can necessarily show someone, it's internal, maybe to him, a feeling. Mm -hmm. And I could see that he could tell you something, tell me something that's similar. And um, I just, I'm kind of at a loss is, uh, maybe I'll ask you this. Is there something that could happen, you know, with faith or how your understanding of the Bible that could maybe, where you'd be able to understand more where Billy is coming from or you'd be able to consider where Billy, Billy's beliefs stem from or is that something that's not possible? Do you mean like, is there a way for me to get to the same belief as Billy? Not even get to the same belief, really. Just uh, um, a way you'd even consider reducing your confidence a little bit in your belief to something that maybe more what Billy might be saying. I mean, if I had a similar experience to what I've had now, but it was telling me something different, then that would probably do it. Similar experience? A similar spiritual experience where God told me that like what I my interpretation was wrong so it seems like we could have two spiritual experiences and those two spiritual experiences could get you to vastly different conclusions and theoretically yeah I guess so I mean but it's not like there's probably be a purpose for why God wanted me to believe that first belief in the first time and now he's like kind of telling me to believe something else yeah. Yeah, and again, I'm just, I could just see with Billy saying the same thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a quandary. It's a quandary. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and uh, there's different yeah, ways. Yeah, you do can... a really good job at kind of grounding it with this like third party comparison. So it's, yeah, I'm not, it's not me that's saying it. And so it's not threatening. Yeah. You and I are trying to call, you and I are trying to solve a riddle together, <laughs> right? Yes. This is riddle you're trying to solve. And yeah. yes, sometimes my Socratic questioning can be a little bit, um, you know, my questioning is very genuine, it is. But sometimes I can ask questions that in a way, I'm trying to put this right, <laughs> that, you know, I'm not trying to play dumb, but I'm just trying to um, 
uh, illicit thought. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Totally. Yeah. And so, uh, and because I, 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 I'm doing it in the sense that we are on this journey together to find out, you and I, let's figure out this together. You know, is Billy right? Are you right? Or is nobody right? Or is it impossible to know? You know, or where should we lie? Or more specifically, where should our confidences lie? Should we be more confident about what you're saying or what he's saying or less confident? Or maybe what you're saying is exactly right, you know? And maybe where the conversation should go is not so much that is, you know, is a seven or an eight a really good place to be for that, for the information you have or the way you know what you know? Maybe yeah. should it be, you know, temper our expectations in six or five, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's after I kind of talked to my wife about the interview that you and I had, it's like, I feel like my goal or a, a goal would be for people to have confidence that's proportional yeah. to evidence. <laughs> right, right. I'm not saying that everyone should only believe in things from which are completely 100% proven. Awesome. That's but exactly. why don't we all kind of yeah. temper our belief relative to the evidence supporting it? It's, yes. Because sometimes when people are new, is perfectly correct. Sometimes when people are new to SC, they, it's, it's, and I'm not even talked about it in terms of this, which is incorrect. You think about it in terms of a conversation to find the truth. Right. Well, good luck. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, it's, um, there may be objective truths about things, but that aside, yeah. the fact that do we know them and, you know, and that's, you know, it's another question and it's kind of be fleeting and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of problems with that. So it's an easier conversation, and especially from a critical thinking standpoint, to talk about things in terms of confidences. Like, um, you know, when people have a confidence at a eight mm -hmm. about a belief and you're digging down and, and it's a feeling, that's I means you're putting a lot of weight from that as a source of truth identification. Yeah, I mean feelings, and it depends on what you're talking. The claim, feelings are a great, a really strong way to know. Like I would put put that at a seven or eight, as far as feelings go. As far as would you prefer vanilla or chocolate ice cream? <laughs> right. I really have a strong feeling. You're a good way to identify <laughs> personal preference or personal experience. Yeah. Yes. I have such a strong feeling. Yeah. And so that you know depends. And so to be a noticed, seven, a seven or eight in a claim like that, that makes a lot of sense. To yeah. Me. Yeah. I've noticed you almost always avoid kind of specificity, in the sense of like, like if you're asking about a claim about like the Earth being flat, you don't talk about things like like tides or like uh, like you know like an actual like physical elements you know I would if those were parts of their belief so the reason why so you, you remember so it's nothing I meant to bring that up you were asking me about uh, what if I took you into space and that kind of thing and that's not the reason why I believe the belief I, I told you the reason the reason why I believe the belief was the Bible Right. So you can show me all of the scientific facts in the world. That's not why I believe it. Uh -huh. And so when someone tells you, what is, when you ask, what is the primary reason why you know what you know, or how you know, you're really letting that soak in. Because if they say the Bible, facts, what are facts going to do? But if so, they say science, yeah. and their understanding of it, and then we so go there. So my thinking there was, and I, I was thinking about this consciously as I was asking the question is that one of the questions that you like to ask is like is there anything that would increase or decrease your belief right yeah and it feels <laughs> it feels like for this particular claim that there's like a very obvious scenario from which one's claim would one's belief level would be decreased so it's like you if you're took asking someone in space, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're asking them like, is there anything mm -hmm. that would be? And that my concern is like, what if they don't 
say that, <laughs> right? Like, what if they yeah. what, say like, uh, I can't think of That's anything, right. or like, that would that would increase or decrease? that would decrease. That's very important. Yeah, that's very important. If someone says they can't think of anything that will decrease their belief, that's huge information because that brings you to a whole different. Doesn't it mean you're kind of done? In no. some respects, I used to think that. I used to think so that. So what do you do? I used to think that when someone tells you, like, "Where do I go from here?" They're just done. I mean, like they're they're doxastically closed and they're, they're yeah. But we talk about that. We talk about. So you're telling me, I just want to hear what you're saying, that you have a belief that, I'm not saying your belief is false. It may be very well correct, but if your belief happened to be false, there's no way you could find out. There's no way you could tell yourself. There's no way somebody else could show you, so you that you are stuck with a belief. if your claim happened to be false. Happened to be. I'm not saying that's the case. Yeah. It could be very well be true. Okay. But if it was, there's no way you could ever find that, that out. You could ever come to that realization. So it's not falsifiable. But if you're saying if your claim happened to be false, in their mind are they not thinking, yeah, but obviously it's not. Like I have. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's why I usually go to the next part. I say if a belief can't be shown to be false, if it was false, if a belief can't be shown to be false, then how do you really know that it's true? Right. And does that generally get through to people sometimes okay sometimes not yeah 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 but and that's kind of the if they just think about it that's some. the takeaway at that point if you and right. if I can end the, end the conversation there if we get to that point I'm very happy ending the conversation there yeah and that's something to think about that's something to take home and say to yourself well okay I can still believe this but it would actually make my belief more powerful. It's a more power, actually a more powerful belief if I believe it less confidently. Because, and open the door that it could be false. Mm -hmm. Because it means I'm investigating it. And it means that I've done the homework in my, for wh whatever way I know things are well, true. Well, I know in my position, in a position of people that were like me with certain religious beliefs, there's not a lot of interrogation of your beliefs that's happening right. while you're in it. Yeah. Right? And so that's, you know, with a tough five minute, 10 minute conversation, I'm hopefully people thinking about things that they're not thinking, haven't thought about before. Mm -hmm. And, and some, and, and awesome thing is sometimes I'll think of thing. I mean, they'll present a question to me that I've never thought about before. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think you're ready. Let's find you somebody. <laughs>